Hello, it is Tuesday, December 28th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Tuesday puzzle today, another fairly gentle, I would hope, uh, puzzle, themed puzzle, gentle themed puzzle, to continue easing us into the week. Hope you're having a good week so far. Today, this particular episode of The Daily Solve is brought to you by Funny JK, Patrick Carthy, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you so much to the three of you and to everybody else uh, who has backed the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. The three I mentioned are benefactors of the Patreon campaign. You can join their ranks at patreon.com slash daily solve, or you can join any tier of the Patreon campaign and receive months of accrued bonus video solves, as well as the new ones that go up every week. I know I'm I'm uh, tardy this week with my bonus solves for the Patreon campaign. I will make up for it when I get back home and have a somewhat uh, smoother recording setup that I can use. Uh, and that will be soon. I'm uh, I will, I'm heading back today, in fact. So anyway, uh, like I said, it's a Tuesday puzzle. But before we solve that, let's discuss... Actually, it might just be one might just be one clue from yesterday's puzzle. Kathy Swope excla- explains that down east or down east, uh, that was in reference to Maine being a phrase being used in Maine. She says it can be a region. Down east can be a region, parts of eastern coastal New England and Canada, and the southeastern part of Maine. The region corresponds to the histori- historical French territory of Acadia. The phrase may derive from sailing. Sailors from western ports sailed downwind towards the east to reach that area. All right, there we go. Thank you. So I wasn't I wasn't quite right with my um, supposition about that yesterday. Uh, no matter. Let's get on to that. Was pretty quick. This is the, <laughs> this is maybe the more rapidly than we've gotten to the main puzzle than I can remember in recent memory. So here we are already on the Tuesday puzzle. This was constructed by Kathy Weinberg. Kathy's done. I don't know, maybe a handful, handful of New York Times puzzles before, certainly not a new constructor to the Times, and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And as I said, there will be a theme to this puzzle. We're still in the early themed part of the week. So let's get started. Okay. Pequency. So if something is piquant, it is... Um, what do you, What is the word for that? It's sort of... I don't know. It's what... Uh, Capers and olives can be this it's sort of a almost a tartness with a hint of bitterness. How do you, it's so hard to describe flavors, isn't it? Um, I don't know. Zest, maybe evasive maneuver. Well, it could be a zig or a zag if that were zest. Actually, let's see if that works with a G here. Racket handle, yeah, it might. So racket could be a grip. So we could have a zig or a zag with evasive maneuver. I don't know if that will be an I or an A, but let's look here. Pretentious in a painterly way. Well, it could be arty, I suppose. And so then we can actually put zest in here, and that sort of works, doesn't it? Yes, so to slip up is to air. A shoe named after a dago. dagger would be a stiletto. A stiletto, a long, thin dagger, and a stiletto heel uh, named for it. A slip up in writing is, of course, a typo, something I <laughs> unfortunately frequently uh, create in these videos. Food topping used at Abe Lincoln's birthplace. Food topping used at Abe Lincoln's birthplace. Now, I think Abe Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, the president of the United States, what, the 16th president maybe, um, was said to be born in a log cabin. That's sort of part of the legend of Abraham Lincoln. So is there something... And, and, I, and I see that they, the, the answer starts with L-O, so I'm wondering if that's relevant. Let's look down. Yes, 4.0 for a valedictorian, maybe. So valedictorian, the, uh, <clears throat> I suppose, the uh, considered the best student academically of a given year in a 4.0 GPA would be a perfect grade point average, all A's. And to wash for gold, to pan for gold. So when you uh, try and sieve, sieve muddy water through uh, through a sieve, I guess, to uh, find the gold, to pan for it. What is this here? Stein filler. You could fill a stein with ale. So what about that? 
And I don't know what else. Food topping. Food topping. So most toppings are used in desserts. The big exception would be pizzas. I mean, you can top other things, but usually that's called a garnish. I mean, toppings, I feel, is really particular to pizza. And when it comes to savory dishes, what would this be? I don't know. Where Michelle Obama was born. Chicago, I believe. Yes, there we go. That fits. And a British fellow could be a chap. A dance named after Cuba's capital. Oh, it must be Havana what? Havan... Havanese dance? I'm not not actually sure what this dance is. A prized mount could be an Arab horse. Uh, Very well-regarded horse breed. March Blank, Lewis Carroll character, the March Hare, a character from Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. A letter-shaped bridge support. Oh. Ah, maybe this is the habanero. That there we go. That that looks right. And that 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 makes that makes sense because B and V are related. And habanero, also the name of a pepper. Okay, so a letter shape, and I I sorry, the reason I jump to that is because I saw this letter-shaped bridge support, and often in, in crosswords, certainly at least in the New York Times crossword, where you'll get um, beams and bars that are clued as supports and bridges or buildings or architecture, and sometimes they're I-bars or I-beams or H-bars or H-beams, and you often just have to sort of figure it out from, from the cross. So in this case, Chicago gives us I, and this looks like an I-bar. And for something to come to an end is for it to perish. Oh, so we are indeed spelling out log cabin here. What is that? Log cabin topping. I don't know. Uh, rejections, no's or nays, perhaps. Nays, does that work? A drunkard? No, maybe not. Maybe it's nose with an E. And a drunkard is a sot. A slightly, probably slightly archaic bit of slang for a drunk, a drunkard. And what is this? It's probably another theme clue. It is dairy product used at the Seven Dwarfs Dwelling. All right, so here we have a theme that consists of ingredients, I suppose, corresponding with... I don't know. We have one historical figure and one group of fictional figures. So figures from culture, I suppose, could be fictional or not. Dairy product used. Butter? I can't see what dairy product would fit. Milk, cream, butter, none of these seem to fit in here. Let's check the crosses, I'm curious. Blank of the apostles. Could be acts of the apostles. To lug around something could be to tote it around. Rant and rage. Well, it could be a word that describes the word rant and rage. It could, well, it could be what these things are examples of, and it could be plural, or it could be a synonym for the act of ranting and raging. Oh, cottage cheese. There we go. Ah, okay. So a dairy product used for the seven dwarfs dwelling is cottage cheese. So it's not just, I see. So it's not just that it's an ingredient associated with a well-known figure. It's maybe that it has specifically to do with a dwelling because we have cottage here and log cabin here. Log cabin. Boy, I really don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, Groups of grapes, e.g. Bunches of grapes. What other what other things are grapes collectively? A sellout indicator. So this is probably a sellout uh, live performance. You could have an SRO sign, standing room only. You see that occasionally in the crossword. Enjoys a long, hot bath, say. Could be soaks. And took notice. Not sure. Let's try and get the rest of this corner up here. Word and many cathedral names. I don't know, Lord or Lady, Our Lady of particular place, for instance. 
main course? Well, in the U.S. anyway, I think uniquely, or at least in North, North America, uniquely it is an entree, whereas in uh, in Europe, including uh, including in the U.K., it would be the main dish. And most traditionally, it would be it was sort of in between what it is in those two places. In classical French, um, I don't know, food preparation, I mean, I suppose cuisine, but but more specifically the way in which the food was presented, it would have been the dish that came before the true main dish, which was the roast, but after the um, the earlier dishes. So it ended up getting up in the in North America, it ended up staying with the early bits, and then in, in Europe ended up staying with the sort of main bit, because that was back when, that was in the 19th century, when you'd have you know, 12 courses or something like that uh, in this sort of cuisine. Anyway, an injection at a hospital... Um, I'm actually not sure, strangely enough. Uh, pitfalls would end with an S. Ambulance letters, EMS, emergency medical services. Oh, a serum, an injection in a hospital. There we go. Okay, I wasn't, I was thinking of the um, active injection as opposed to the substance being injected. But yes, a serum is an injection of, uh, it's the thing that would be injected. All right, a treasure holder could be a treasure chest, a recluse, um, a loner, I suppose. Pitfalls could be traps. So what is this? Oh, log cabin syrup. What does that mean? So topping for pancakes. What does that mean? Log cabin syrup. That must be. <laughs> this must be a phrase. It must be either a brand or a phrase with which I don't happen to be familiar. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're, if it's uh, overwhelmingly obvious to you and you are e yelling at me through the screen about it. I'm very sorry. I'm sure someone will tell me in a comment. Groups of grapes, clusters of grapes. Word in many cathedral names. Oh, holy! There we go. There's another obvious one. And extremely would be ultra. Tulsa school. The R is surprising. I'm not sure offhand. Raised to the third power would be cubed. Well, okay, there we go. <laughs> a U is actually the least surprising letter to go into a school abbreviation for university. Is this religious university? What is that R? Is habanero wrong? What is this? Good morning, America. Oh, maybe it is wrong. Good morning, America. Oh, is it habanera, perhaps? Is it a feminine noun? Is Good Morning? I have no idea what network Good Morning America airs on. Is it ABC? I mean, that would make sense with the A. Hopefully that A is correct. O-R-U. I hope that's correct. Oklahoma. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to have to uh, go out on a limb and hope that th that is correct. It seems correct based on all of the crosses. I mean, this O is certainly right, and so is cubed. So I'm just going to have to move on. I think it's right. Rant and rage, uh, took notice, um, old TVs, the adventures of Rin Tin Tan. Never actually seen that, but I'm certainly aware of the character, the dog. Always in poems, could be air, E-E-R, a, a Poetic or archaic contraction of ever, always. Vegetable whose name is also slang for money would be kale. And, uh, kale, cabbage, bread, I guess, for a non-vegetable uh, monetary slang. Bad situation for an airplane. I suppose a particularly bad situation would be a tailspin. And a wrist and elbow connector, the ulna, is a... Uh, I think that one of those thin bones there took notice. Ah, sat up. I see. Sat up and took notice. A clothes, uh, no, plural. Clothes holders on a clothesline would be clothes pegs. And Las Palmas, city in the Canary Islands, looks certainly correct. Ah, here we have another theme clue. Turkey stuffing used at the Ewing's South Fork. What? <laughs> What does that mean? Um, at the Ewing's South Fork. 
Is South Fork the name of a stately home or something? What does that mean? Well, it could be dressing because another name for stuffing in the context of poultry is dressing. So house, oh, house dressing. So maybe that is the name of a home, South Fork. Is that something we, I know, <laughs> someone would be expected to know? I'm very curious what this means. I, there's definitely something going on with some of these clues that I guess this probably isn't anything particular to the theme. It's probably just that these are, I happen to be hitting more than one reference that I don't personally know. Log cabin syrup. I mean, I certainly know what house dressing is. It just means the, well, I assume it just means the the dressing that, you know, the restaurant or the, wherever it is you're eating, it's just their house dressing. It's what they have around as opposed to a particular um, brand or what have you. But I don't know what the Ewing's South Fork is. It seems very specific. Anyway, sorry, I won't keep dwelling on it. Speaking of dwellings, um, earth in... Oh, no, maybe it's not house dressing. Because I just saw this, and this is earth in science fiction. Earth is often terra. Is it salad dressing? Ewing's South Fork. And to rant and rage. To storm, perhaps? Oh, didn't look at this down clue. Heist, a heist hall would be loot, loot from a heist. So Vulcan's telepathic link. Oh no, what did I say? Store, storm is what I said. Vulcan's telepathic link. Is it Vulcan the god? Oh no, Vulcan... Um, what is it? From Star Trek. Vulcan's telepathic link. Is that a mind meld? There we go. It took me longer than it probably should have. Uh, all right. So it's not salad dressing. It's not house dressing. What is this? Turkey stuffing used at the Ewing's South Fork. Manor dressing? Is that a manor house? Manor dressing. What is manor dressing? I'm wondering if the, if again, like I said, I'm wondering if South Fork is the name of a stately home, a manor or something like that. But I'm not really sure. Michael of SNL. Michael... Is Michael Che someone from SNL? It sort of rings a bell. Let's see. I'm not really sure. USA, USA, EG is a cheer. And being named... Oh, that's funny. We had a valedictorian referenced here, their 4.0 GPA. And here we have another reference to being named vector, valedictorian for one would be an honor. And a lead into line or setter. Oh, maybe not. Trend line or trend setter. So I guess USA isn't a cheer. Oh, it's a chant. Okay, fair enough. Um, could have been either of those, but it was chant in this case. So a trend line or a trend setter. A candidate for a Booker Prize. That's a novel given to... Well, it was... Um, given to UK or Commonwealth, uh, to, to English language novels that originate in the UK or the Commonwealth, it's now been extended to any, I believe, any English language novel, regardless of publication um, country. Or not publication country, but origin, country of origin. Okay. Jumper cable connection, an anode, I suppose. And turkey stuffing. Oh, no. This is, oh, here's our revealer. Sorry. So here's our revealer. We have arrived at the thing that will hopefully, I think, at least I'm hoping, will explain what's going on. Although I think I do basically know, know what's going on, which is that we have dwellings um, that are part of um, locations associated with these figures. All right, so spreads using 20, 28, and 48 across. Uh, homemade sauces? No, it doesn't fit. Homemade, we have syrup, cheese, and dressing. Um, I don't know. Let's confirm homemade before we move on. March Madness Organization. That's the um, NCAA, the National Collegiate Athletics, whatever. This came up just the other day. <laughs> Administration or agency or association. Calendar block. Uh, a day is a block on one block on the calendar. 
fancy dress? Oh, fancy dressing as in fancy dress? No. No, no, sorry. It's ranch dressing. <laughs> okay, ranch dressing. So South Fork isn't a manor house. It's not a stately home. It's the name of a ranch. That also is entirely plausible. What a funny thing. Is that a very commonly known ranch? That's so odd. Maybe it's not odd. Maybe I'm just incredibly uninformed, which is entirely plausible. So anyway, that gives us jettison as remove in the associated down. And anything else we had? Oh no, here we have mythical Greek monsters, hydras. There we go. And make it blank. Make it rain, I suppose. Um, in, it's in quotation marks, so it would be an exclamation as opposed to be something you could imagine someone exclaiming as opposed to just anything that could technically follow make it. Simplicity could be ease and does as the sun does in the evening would be sets. The sun sets in the evening. And a pottery maker would be a uh, ceramist, I suppose. I think if I were to have guessed at that, I would have, I suppose, incorrectly guessed it would have been ceramicist. But perhaps it is simply ceramist. That's good to know, if so. A helper, abbreviation, is an assistant, A-S-S-T. And if one expresses sorrow for one's wrongdoing, one repents. Zoom or TikTok, this is an or answer, so it's singular, even though we have two examples, and each one of those is an app. And a destination for a rest cure is a spa. Homemade, oh, homemade meals. Okay, fair enough. Sp oh, I see. So it's this, I was thinking spreads as in um, something you'd spread on toast or something like that. Although you don't really spread dressing on toast, so that wouldn't have worked very well. So it's not homemade spreads in that sense. It's a spread meaning a big uh, layout of food, a big presentation of food consisting of, I guess, log cabin syrup, cottage cheese, and ranch dressing. A bit of a strange spread, if you ask me, but, uh, but perhaps there is more than just those three components. All right, so what do we have here? Big lugs could be apes. A uh, person's a real big lug, big ape. Capia of Latvia is Riga. An instrument in most jazz combos is the sax for saxophone. And Kentucky's Fort Knox. So let's check our crosses, and just before we fill it out, as to frolic, have a bit of a frolic, have a bit of a lark. And a narcissist's flaw is their ego. All right, and there it is. <laughs> A bit of a tentative solve, I would say, on my part, in contrast to yesterday's, where once I got the theme, I sort of very smoothly sailed through the remainder of the grid. In this case, I certainly uh, met a bit of resistance with some of these themes. I think the, the grid in general, I think, solved pretty smoothly, as, as we would expect it to on a Tuesday. I think I just hit some things that I'm not necessarily personally as familiar with, and that's fine. It happens with the crossword. And... To be fair, they were all part of the theme, and I was able to get everything else with crosses, so that's okay. But yes, I'm not sure. Log Cabin Syrup must be, it must be a brand of maple syrup or something like that. It sounds like a plausible brand name for that. Um, cottage Cheese, obviously, I know, and Ranch Dressing. This The Ewings must be a family who own a ranch called South Fork, and that must be something that is either known or is obvious enough based on who the Ewings are, that people who aren't me <laughs> must, uh, must be able to infer. All right, anyway, uh, there we go. And those all together comprise homemade meals or a homemade meal. So despite my, despite my occasional stumbles, um, still a fairly smooth solve throughout the rest of the grid, I think came together well. Let me know how you fared. I'm sure I will, I'm sure I will have more explanatory notes in the comments tomorrow than I did today based on my, uh, based on my performance with these theme answers in particular. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. I'm probably going to try and wrap this video up. My voice seems to be, I didn't realize until I started the video how hoarse my voice was, voice is, seems to be today. So I'm very sorry about that. I hope it's not, I hope it hasn't been too unpleasant. Um, but I am going to, uh, I'm going to wrap this video up and go drink some water. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the solve and the puzzle and the video. If you did, please do subscribe to the channel. And if you know someone who might like this, uh, maybe someone who can explain to me uh, the Ewing's South Fork and Log Cabin Syrup, um, 
uh, then pass it on to them as well, either personally or through your online social media or community of choice. I uh, very much appreciate it as word of mouth is pretty much the only way I have to make this series, um, well, to spread it, I suppose, speaking of spreads. Uh, the, the homemade spread of this series is when you, the viewers, pass it on to others. Wow, that was terrible. All right. <laughs> um, what else? You can follow me on Twitter at The Daily Solve. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this puzzle, if you'd like to directly support this channel and help make this a sustainable um, bit of my daily work, you can contribute a few pounds a month or the equivalent in your local currency to my Patreon campaign. And for that, you will receive a wealth of bonus videos with more going up each week, uh, as well as um, an additional channel, access to an additional channel on the Daily Solve Discord chat server. Oh, and that reminds me, I haven't yet um, myself uh, checked into this, but I'm going to as soon as I can. Uh, someone on the Discord chat server, this was fascinating, has apparently created some kind of website that you can use to get a um, a more in-depth presentation of your own New York Times crossword solving stats. So this is Baron Bliss on the um, Baron Bliss on the uh, Discord chat server in the New York Times, in the NYT Crossword channel, has a link to his website at crosswordstats.com and an explanation of how to plug it into your own New York Times Crossword account. And it needs, um, uh, this person says it works better on the computer than the phone. So just a heads up on that. And I'm going to, I'm going to try that today or tomorrow when I'm, when I'm at a sort of more normal computer setup. And I'm very excited to check it out. So that's the kind of thing that seems to pop up on the Discord chat server. Um, uh, so go give that go give that a look if that sounds interesting to you at all. I will as well. Anyway, um, great. I think that sounds about right. I'll wrap this video up. Thank you so much for joining me for today's Tuesday puzzle. I hope you'll be back for the Wednesday puzzle tomorrow, the midweek, mid-difficulty puzzle. And um, until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.